Why are my urinary B6 markers saying I'm deficient when my plasma levels are high normal? This is a clip from a live Q&A session open to CMJ Masterpass members. In addition to this episode, you can access lots of other free samples from these sessions at the first link in the description. RB says, on a recent Genova organics test, I had high kynorenate, high xanthronate, and high quinolinate, which I know indicates low B6, but this was while I was taking 7 milligrams B6 per day. However, a blood test of B6 plasma showed I had normal levels of B6 at 38 micrograms per liter with a, in a reference interval 3.4 to 65.2, which is, by my eyeballing, some two-thirds into the normal range. Should I trust the blood test saying my B6 is normal or the urinary marker saying it's not? If the latter, how high do I have to raise my B6 as I'm now taking 30 milligrams a day? How do I know when it's not high when it's high enough? No, two years ago in 2020, I took a baseline measurement when I was not supplementing at all and I had high kynorenate, but borderline xanthronate and normal quinolinate. I know you mentioned high estrogen could cause high urinary markers, but on a Dutch Plus test in 2020 around the same time, my estrogen was actually low, below the normal range. I'm not on oral contraceptives either. Um... So inflammation is another thing that can activate the kind of renin pathway in addition to estrogen. But it looks like you're also describing a more recent increase in these markers. And so two years ago in 2020, you had more moderate uh, uh, of the B6 markers, but, and you also had low estrogen. You know, so it's it's possible that your inflammatory state stayed the same, but your estrogen has increased since then. Or it's possible that your estrogen stayed the same and your inflammatory state has increased since then. It's also possible you're eating a higher protein diet because these markers are tryptophan metabolites, and although there are things that caught that alter the relative balance of tryptophan that falls into the kynorenin pathway. It's just also true that any excess of tryptophan will ultimately fall into the kynorenin pathway on the way towards being completely combusted for energy. You know, so you might just be eating more more protein now, and the B six requirement is tied to the protein requirement. I mean, it is tied to protein intake. So. As to why your B6 intake has gone up, but these markers have gone up, you want to consider inflammation, estrogen, and protein intake. And then in terms of how much B6 you need, there's you definitely... Sh- your B6 plasma levels are not really informative at all um, because... We don't know, for example, you have trouble bringing B6 into cells, but also if you're supplementing, you're they're 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 probably going to run higher than they than they generally run. But I'll just say that if you're supplementing, it's probably pushing your plasma levels up to the point where it's not that informative, especially when you know that your B6 deficiency tryptophan metabolites are high. Um. It is probably a good idea to measure alkaline phosphatase in your serum. If it's low, that might indicate that you have trouble breaking the phosphate group off of of, uh, P5P in order to get B6 into the cell. And if that's the case, you might need higher than normal B6 levels to get normal cellular levels of B6. By the way, make sure, make sure you are taking P5P. Don't take pyridoxine because pyridoxine can, can interfere with, with paradoxal function. So definitely make sure that you're not taking pyridoxine. Um, and the only way to know if they normalize and metabolize is to repeat the test. So you probably want to go up to a certain level, stay at that level, then repeat the test over time. And of course, you have to consider if you're getting any symptoms from this as well. RB clarifies that alkaline phosphatase is normal at 57 on the lower end of a range of 44 to 121. Um, you know, it's on the lower end of the range of the normal range. You, you know, so you don't have any diagnosable problem with your alkaline phosphatase, but 
that's going to bias you perhaps towards higher plasma levels relative to cellular levels. You see what I mean? So, uh, so if anything, that just makes it more plausible that your plasma levels are going to have to go up a little bit higher to get cellular levels up to normal to normalize these metabolites. So consider inflammation, estrogen, and and protein intake, and you have to repeat the markers to know whether they've normalized. There's nothing else you can substitute for that. All right, thank you, RB, for your question. Hope that helps. This is a clip from a live Q&A session open to CMJ Masterpass members. In addition to this episode, you can access lots of other free samples from these sessions at the first link in the description. If you want to become a Masterpass member so that you can participate in the next live Q&A, or so that you can have access to the complete recording and transcript of each Q&A session, you can join at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass. You can save 10% off the subscription price for as long as you remain a member by signing up at chrismasterjohnphd.substack.com slash Q&A. That's Q&A spelled out as Q-A-N-D-A. These links are in the description.